was a great man. He, he helps me to understand Western history and it's the reason why I did great honor and great pleasure in paying homage even after so much years that he has left us now. I felt it was my responsibility. winning in the end by just 10 runs. They looked as though they were on course to win by something much bigger until the John Eugene show lit up this ground. Tony Kosia is uh, alongside me at the moment. Tony, as I said before, we thought that James had uh, done something exceptional. Who could have told us that John Eugene would better it? Well, the thing is that uh, both teams were down and out, it seemingly, with uh, five down for St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and then comes James with an explosive innings, fireworks all over the place, being supported by Bob, the Bob and James show. <laughs> and then towards uh, the end of this innings, then we felt, as you said, St. Martin, no chance. And then Eugene plays the kind of innings which uh, we had been expecting from Eugene since he was age 20 when he got that 100 for the Windward Islands against the Barbados team that included Malcolm Marshall and other top bowlers. We, we looked at this fellow and said he's something special. But he just tapered off and uh, of course has now moved to St. Martin. He's not so much into cricket. But we know we know he always had the talent. And he played some magnificent shots tonight. I mean, the, there was no swiping about this. This was clean, good clean hitting. And he, he really deserved the 100. And brought the crowd to life. I mean, this has been a really good crowd this evening. Mostly uh, supporting St. Vincent. But what I thought was really good when he got his 100, of course, uh, they, they, St. Vincent were, knew they were going to win then. They all went up to him and congratulated him out in the middle. All of St. Vincent's players went up to Eugene and shook his hand, tapped him on his back. Really good. Thank you very much for your thoughts, Tony. We'll pause there for the moment. A couple more things to say about that knock, but we'll... Name Tony Kojo um, dates back when I was still a little young boy going to school and obviously had an interest in cricket. I used to listen to live commentary on radio. And reflecting on the passing time knowing Tony Kozier as a commentator up until now, I want to recognize him more than just a commentator. He was actually a sports institute, you know. He was more than just an icon. He was like a sports archive. He had that kind of enthusiasm for sports, love for sports. Um, that would cause anyone listening to him to want to pay attention. It was infectious and you'd want to get involved in what actually was advocating for sports and sport development. So over time, I think he became um, an ambassador for sports development throughout the Caribbean. And most of us who know him um, spend the rest of his life, or especially the last decade or so of his life, trying to advocate for what is a sports foundation that would uh, see sports development generally all across the region and of course try to mobilize resources to put it where it matters most. He was also involved in documenting some of our rich cricketing legacy and sports legacy throughout the Caribbean and I think for those of us who read a lot on sports and sports development and what it means to us um, as a people um, would recognize him for such a contribution as well. So again, I'd want to recognize him for more than just being an icon, for more than being a, a commentator that used to be this, bring this rich live description of any game to your home, to your radio. He was, to me, um, an archivist of sports throughout the region and, of course, an institution, and I'd want to recognize him for that. I believe with his passing, uh, we're much poorer in the area of sports, and of course, we'd want to celebrate him for his contributions. This is where it all started, here and at similar parade grounds throughout the Caribbean, where the British military was stationed in the 18th and 19th centuries, when the European powers were fighting for the spoils of the recently discovered New World. 
This is the garrison savannah in Barbados, and it was on this very ground in 1865 that the first match between two West Indian territories was contested, between Barbados and what was then British Guyana. It was the start of a process by which the game, introduced by the British, was fashioned by West Indians of every class and race into an expression of our unique character and eventually developed into a consistently high level of exciting excellence. Ironically, cricket is no longer played here at the garrison, which is now the horse racing centre. But West Indians play their cricket everywhere else, on the great grounds of the world, on small, rough patches hemmed in by Caribbean cane fields, in the street, in the backyard, on the beaches. And, test match or club match, knockout or knockabout, they play it with an instinctive verve and a sense of enjoyment. They play it the West Indian way. This is what confuses the Jamaican captains. Why is there a third man? The score is five for two. Two brand new ones in the crease. This is the third man. Why he brought the England to the crease? He won four slips. At least! I'm looking for a third wicket immediately. Put more pressure on the Jamaican Yes, um, I did hear uh, about uh, Mr. Cozier's death um, while striving um, lunchtime. I think it is very, um, it's, it's, a, it's a big blow to the whole cricketing world. And not only to the cricketing world, but to, to the whole world of sport. Um, a very good reporter always giving you the, um, the facts and putting it off in his own in, inimitable way, um, where he brings the truth and you know that you're getting the exact, you know, um, ideas not only from him but from various other persons behind his whole his whole presentation. So I think I mean all in all, it's a big loss to the cricketing world, as I said before, and I I do personally regret it. A wealth of knowledge, of course, a wealth of knowledge in cricket and um, in all aspects of the related sports. Outkirk. I am a guy in the national shipping project manager. I came here to sign the condolence book and to pay tribute to the late Mr. Tony Cozy, who passed from this life recently and who was a great inspiration to me and to many, many youngsters of my generation uh, as he did his commentaries on cricket games across the world, whether it was in Australia, where we listened by night or in England where we listen by day, or in, here in the Caribbean where we listen by day, wherever the voice of Tony Cozy was heard, it had a gripping effect on all of us. Uh, his capacity to describe what was happening with fidelity and to bring the cricket game into your very living room or wherever you were listening, uh, that capacity was unmatched. I have seen him sit alongside some of the best commentators in the world and quite frankly, they had a lot to learn from him. He didn't have much to learn from them. And it made me feel very proud as a West Indian. I think uh, his passing has left a void in Barbadian sports journalism. Uh, a void which it will, it will take some time to fill. But we remember him this evening with profound gratitude and they join thousands across the Caribbean and the world in praying that his soul will rest in peace.